The table's a mess. Hey, excuse that, please. But here's the BGT thing converted to fixed geometry. Uh, I have some. Oh, I'll we'll flip it over with one hand. And this is the 58. 6514, that's now 58, 68, 9. But this one has to come back apart because I totally forgot that I gotta make this longer by a factor of the difference between the housings. Forgot till I have it all together. And then always on S300s, right? You get rid of the snap ring and there's always another problem. This bolt's stripped, not a big deal, but you always find out when you're putting it together. So it got to come back apart and get tapped, drilled and tapped to. Uh, 3816 instead. They, they're M8 by 1.25. You can drill these and put in a 3816. It'll fit through the hold down, no problem, and through most of the covers. It's not too close to the inside where it'll cause crack. So I thought I'd do compounds, right? 14.7. That's the normal pressure ratio. So if we had 30 psig. Measured it'd be 14.7 plus 30 divided by 14.7, so 4.7, 2.04. And for compounds, it's interstage absolute plus overall divided by interstage absolute. So if we had 90 overall, it'd be 44.7 because it's interstage absolute, so we have 30 in the interstage. That's G, so it's 44.7 plus 90 divided by 44.7, 2.01. Now this might sound crazy, right? Because all of a sudden this number gets really big. Um, but that's not a pressure number. It's just a ratio of pressures. And just want to say just kidding because somebody sent me this nice old book. So. <laughs> Calculating pressure ratios and compounds. It's exact same as you would do with the single standard atmospheric plus gauge divided by atmospheric. Uh, this is going to be at sea level if you need to find your pressure where you're at above sea level. Um, there's a lot of apps that do that, calculators that do that. I have a app for airplanes um, that does it really cool and it gives you the um, the base density and all kinds of fun stuff. So in compounds, the interstage pressure absolute is your new atmosphere for the manifold turbocharger. So it's interstage PSIG, or sorry, interstage PSIA, PSI absolute, plus PSIG overall, so that's pressure out of the manifold turbocharger divided by interstage PSI absolute. So if the Atmo is producing 30 PSIG in the interstage pipe, and then it's 30 plus 14.7 gives you, or uh, sorry, that must at, uh, is, that must at a 3.04 pressure ratio at sea level, then the interstage is going to be 30 plus 14.7. Um, so that's 44.7. And then the pressure ratio for the Atmo is 3.04, because you just do it how you do any pressure ratio, because you can kind of treat it kind of as a big, single sitting out there out front. If the PSIG out of the manifold turbocharger is 90 PSIG measured by a gauge, then the pressure ratio for the small turbocharger is 3.01. Um, sounds kind of weird, right? Because it's taking um, 30. I mean, what you want to think about is taking 30 and raising it to 90. Um, is what's going on. And how you do that is, like I said, it's the uh, interstage atmospheric pressure plus overall pressure divided by interstage atmospheric pressure. It is just the ratio of the pressures. Because a map is generated using known atmospheric conditions, so pressure and temperature, so like these maps don't have it on there, um, but a lot of your like factory whole set maps and a lot of the Garrett maps will say at pressure 14 PSIA and at a Rankine, Rankin, however you guys want to pronounce it, or Kelvin number, sometimes Fahrenheit, sometimes Celsius number. Um, those conditions create this map. Essentially what happens is as soon as you change those atmospheric conditions, say as increasing the atmospheric pressure ahead of this thing from 14.7A or 0G to 30G or 44.7A, the map kind of becomes irrelevant-ish. It's still useful, 
um, but it's not as useful as we think. What's going to become really useful is having boost and drive with the turbo as a single starting out. We're going to get to that. Because the map is generated using an atmospheric conditions, and a change in those conditions make the map invalid. True. But can we still infer from the map? What still holds true so far is the pressure ratio the manifold turbocharger wants to maintain. So the pressure ratio where your drive to boost is the best stays about the same with the uh, turbo and compounds or as a single. And that's because the air speeds don't really change. Just the amount flowing through it increases substantially in some cases. Um, but the pressure ratio that, that the manifold turbo wants to run is the same. Say you have like a stock stuck engine, um, they like to run like you know two o to you know about two four two five. Or it's not two o. I would say two two is factory. So um, let's just use two two to two seven. Um, you would want to try and maintain that same pressure ratio with the manifold turbocharger with the compound. Shaft speed. <laughs> this is an interesting one, and the only way to see it is with shaft speed sensors on both turbochargers. Shaft speed reduces as atmospheric pressure increases. So if the pressure generated, or the work generated by the manifold turbocharger stays the same, so it's receiving its output shaft horsepower stays the same from the turbine, uh, but the pressure increases from the Atmo turbocharger, then shaft speed reduces out of this guy. You, this is where you start to kind of have to infer stuff if you're not going to measure it, because basically this bottom part of the map is gone in compound. This is a relevant, but the pressure ratio side still matters, and you can kind of come over here and um, you can get a general idea. You can, I mean, not really, I guess, because here you can be here um, of where the shaft speeds at generally said just maintain the same pressure ratio that it wants to run as a single is a really good spot but you can get a fair idea of um, say if the pressure ratio of the manifold turbocharger was reducing while the atmos is increasing then you know you're starting to drive the turbocharger diagonally back down this direction and then if the um, pressure ratio is increasing out of the manifold turbocharger and not in the app mode, then you know that you're traveling kind of diagonally up this direction to a higher speed and a higher pressure ratio out of the many. And then I said, if app mode pressure increases with no uh, increase in work done by uh, the manifold turbocharger, we know that we're traveling diagonally. This, way. this is kind of where compounds get really wonky because this doesn't exist anymore. Not without rerunning this test. With 44.7 PSI A feeding this turbocharger while they're making the map. And if they did do that, you know, it'd be super cool if they did, but it would completely change the map. Um, make sure we can solve that. Change in. Pressure has very little effect on air speeds. Um, evidence for this to hold true. Um, look at spark ignition engines. They are air speed limited by the cylinder head and the cam. They should be at least. And as they increase boost pressure, their peak torque and their peak horsepower locations, for the most part, will remain in the same spot as they did when it was normally aspirated. Why this doesn't work on diesels as well is because the turbocharger is the choke location on turbo diesels, whereas SI engines, usually the head and the cam is the choke location on those engines. Yeah, uh, you do see it when if you put too small of a turbocharger on the spark ignition engine, you will see peak torque and peak horsepower shift left. But they will never really shift right farther than they were unless there was something substantially wrong with the system. Has a large effect on the CFM capacity of the channel. So the channel, float orifice, spacing here. If you increase the head pressure uh, ahead of this, it's a, it's 
capacity that it can flow increases with that. Now I'm going to get the photo. That shows how that kind of works. It's just a little chart. Um, but yeah, doing, dealing with compressibles, uh, as you increase the head pressure, the pressure of the head of the flow orifice, the flow orifice will flow more. Uh, CFM, based off of, it'll do that all the way up until the airspeed. The change in airspeed requires so much work done by the pressure that it can't go any faster. So as air speeds get faster and faster, it takes more and more power to get them to continue to go faster. And there's a point where um, power required just kind of gets dumb. So far, the best way to start on the compressor side is to make sure the Atmos pressure ratio does not drive the pressure ratio of the manifold charger too low, nor let it run too high. Because to get the most flow out of the system as a whole, there's a spot rotational speed and pressure output wise where this guy is the happiest, right? It flows the most while doing the most pressure rise. And I know we want to say compressor maps tell us what that is, but it doesn't because a compressor map does not take into account the turbine map. <laughs> That's why general practice you can get, like all this, like there's fine, medium, and coarse. Compressor map's kind of medium. It kind of gets you in the ballpark. And from there, depending on the engine size, RPM, all that fun stuff, it's going to kind of play a role in what that's going to be. So, you know, like the big turbine uh, hole sets on SI engines, they actually don't like to run the same pressure ratios that they like to run on the diesel engine. You know, it's completely different stuff. So, to make the system flow the most, you want to get this guy to be in its happiest and you also kind of want to do the same thing with the Atmo. You want the Atmo to be in its happiest spot. So, but that kind of gets tricky, and we'll do that on the, because we'll have to talk about exhaust stuff, and that's going to be long. All right, depending on engine size, RPM, pressure targets, because you have to have a pressure target. Why add boost if you don't have a pressure target? Wastegates. <laughs> Um, so if you have wastegates, you can control the pressure ratios between both stages to some extent, and also control the shaft speeds to try and get them to maintain where they where they have this. Play a large role in what Atmo will work the best. All engine systems are a collection of compromises. If there was one magical thing that did all of it, there wouldn't be all kinds of people making different parts. Um, systems that want to operate at a, you can have the same engine with two different owners. One guy wants to take it to 5,000 and the other guy wants it to work really good at 1,600. All right, there's a, it's a, a hundred plus different ways to like solve, um, you know, to solve a problem. At the end of the day, the only thing the engine cares about is the pressure deltas across the cylinder head, so boost to drive. So regardless of the name of the turbocharger, uh, how cool it looks if drive to boost is the same between the turbochargers and the drive and the boost are the same numbers, then the performance output is exactly the same. It's kind of neat. That's why when you look at like pro mod race cars and all that stuff, um, doesn't really make too big of a difference depending on uh, what they're on because most of those turbochargers in modern day times are all pretty good and they all go fast. So, back to the start, just for some fun, right? The engine only knows the pressure across uh, the cylinder head, so the boost to drive ratio. And engines tolerate boost to drive ratios differently depending on engine speed, cam, and cylinder head. So, that's also neat. Uh, so, with the overall, of 90 PSIG or a 7.12 pressure ratio because it's, it's 90 plus 14.7 divided by 14.7, so 104.7. The motor only knows this part. The Atmo only knows 3.04. If you plotted this, the pounds minute would be found with the overall PR, but the PR used on the map would be the Atmo's PR of 3.04. We got a 300 cubic inch engine at 5,000 RPMs at 90% VE. That's 390 CFM. And we said we have a good intercooler. So after we 
compress the thing to 90 pounds of boost and um, you know, say air to water and bring it down to 110 degrees afterwards. That's 0 0.069 pounds per cubic foot. So we got everything we need now. It's censored up, motor censored up. Uh, and yeah, we know what the VE is in this case. It's multiplication. You can do it whatever order you want, whatever makes the most sense. You can have 0 0.069 pounds per cubic foot at 14.7 PSIA. So at 104.7 PSIA, we get 0.49 pounds per cubic foot. So you could take 0.49 pounds per cubic foot times 390 CFM. So it's 390 CFM. Inside that 390 CFM, it now weighs 0.49 pounds per cubic foot. Or we could take 390 CFM times 0 0.069, which gives 26.91 pounds a minute. That's what it's flowing. And then the CFM is being what takes the same space as the CFM. Uh, it's not compressed 7.12 pounds. So you'd get the number, and, and then you take that and multiply it by the 0.069, or you could just go 390 times 7.12. So 2,776.8 CFM is now compressed in the same space as 390, and it weighs 0 0.069 pounds per cubic foot, which gives us 191.59 pounds a minute at 3.04 pressure ratio. That's a lot. This number came out bigger than I thought. I was hoping I had a map out that it would land on, but... Uh, so it's multiplication, do whatever order makes the most sense to you. I usually do it this one first to this one because this number here, you can just change this out for the exhaust number if you want to. So if your EGTs are, you just redo it instead of IT being 110 degrees, you do put uh, exhaust gas temperature is 1200 degrees and it's point, uh, point zero 0.02 something or point zero 0.01 or point zero 0.02. Multiply it and I'll give you the pounds minute for the exhaust and you can go to a turbine map. but for turbine maps, you have to know expansion ratio, so you need to know the pressure after the turbo wheel and the pressure in the exhaust manifold, and then you have the flow rate, and you can plot yourself out on the turbine map. So if you plotted this, though, it would be 3.04 pressure ratio on the vertical and 191.59 on the horizontal, which we don't go that high here, but you would go up 3.04, then you would go across until you hit 190 um, over here. <laughs> And that's how you would plot that out on a map. So that's how you would choose like your Atmo. You'd want to Atmo that at a 3.04 pressure ratio and 190 pounds a minute. You know, you're fairly efficient is probably a good idea how to do that. And you want to make sure that it's large enough um, that it makes, you know, actually, I guess, I guess this is already be done. So you just want to make sure in this case, because you would say those are the targets I want to run. So where do you have targets done uh, per se? So targets are done, so now you could just come in here and say, I want I need a map that lands me at at a high efficiency at that condition without being so overkill that it maybe takes too long to come online, but you know, 190 pounds a minute if you want. <laughs> um so yeah. That's how you would do that. Hopefully this is cool, short little video. Um kind of all there is to that one. Um We'll go over all the motor cares about next or exhaust flows next on compounds because that's kind of an interesting one because it gets into rotor speeds and i have rotor speeds printed up so maybe look at that next so thank you